Let's talk about this issue. My guest this morning, Professor Francis Nunu, is the acting chief director of the Ministry of Food, uh, MOFAT, and Minister of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development. Prof, good morning. Good morning. And thanks for joining us. Thank and I also have uh, Professor Patrick Ofori dancing. He's a department from the Department of Marine and Fisheries Science, University of Ghana. And he's also uh, with the Science and Technical Working Group of the Fisheries Commission. Prof. Dancin, good morning too. Thank and you. And grateful for your time. So let's start this conversation. The, the closed season uh, issue we know, but what informed the decision? Prof. Nunu, let me start with you. Yes. Uh, the main issue is that over the years, since mid-1990s, mm. the fish catch in Ghana has been declining. And it's been a continuous trend. It's declined to the level that, as at now, is going to almost its lowest peak. Said that if we continue to allow the same situation, the same level of effort to continue, the fish resource being a natural resource might collapse and research has shown over the years when it collapses it might take over 10 to 15 years before it comes up i see and then that's so we're overfishing we are really overfishing yes. and there's over capacity in our fishing industry more boats more fishing hours illegal fishing so much and this trend has continued and now they themselves can attest that when they go to sea, they don't bring fish. They put in so much effort and they bring plastics or they bring very little. So, who is overfishing? The fishers in Ghana are overfishing the resource. So many of them, so much power, so much energy, and so many boats fishing non rest. A boat goes out sea and for three months it is out there raking and taking everything. The pressure on the fish resource is huge. And since 2014, these various governments have decided to try and arrest the situation. The reports are that we should reduce at least the effort by 50%. I see. Professor Nansen, the argument by these are local fishermen that indeed they are not those overfishing, but the problem could be uh, traced to the petroleum is it legitimate petroleum of course is not legitimate it's one of the uh, illegal methods of harvesting fish in our waters mm. as uh, my director said um, there is a threshold at which we can go below which we cannot let the fisheries survive we've reached that point where we reach the threshold and there is nothing that we can do without closing this, the fisheries. Because there is a, nothing there's a minimum bottom line that we can harvest minimum where we have to draw the line. Otherwise, we lead to collapse of the fishery. I see. We reach that point. The only, re, the only measure is to close the sea for August. That's um, it. It's one of the measures for... Um, arresting this decline. Closing the decision is only one of the methods. There are other methods. But the closing of the season at this time is because most of the fish stocks spawn. They lay eggs, if you like, they breed okay. during August. This is the peak season that they breed. And therefore, if we want to protect breeding, then this is the right time. If you want to protect juveniles, this is the right time. If you want to protect recruits, young ones that will come to the stock, this is the most appropriate time. So I am to believe that uh, uh, to protect the young ones, the young fishes, closing the season, which is one of the measures, is the only one we can use now in August. When we come, yes, this is the only one that when we, we can, can use, use in August. Yes. Right. There, there, are other measures. there are other measures. But for closing the season, this is the best time. And because this is when we, they breed, they that breed. is when we are closing the yes. season. Yes, and also we don't want to interfere with breeding. By fishing at this time, you interfere with breeding. We want to protect interference with breeding. Allow them to do it peacefully and comfortably. So that we we'll get more fish. We we'll get more fish. Plus, if we close down the season, which has been explained that in August, 
because of the young ones. The closing the season, which is only one of the, the measures, this is the time to do it. But are we able to deal with patrolling in this time, in August, so that we close the season, we don't allow patrollers to work? Are we able to stop them? The, that, that, that is why the total. The closing of the season is total. total. Nobody total. is going fishing. Exactly. But are we able to stop petrolers? Petro there is no currently no petroling. Currently, I can say for a fact. There is currently no petroling in Ghana. There is trolling. But there is no petroling in Ghana. Okay. So we can stop trolling. Yes. All fleets. All fleets are we are able to. Yes. We are able to. Our mind please have what it takes to stop them. Yes, even just yesterday in the news, you heard uh, the Marine Police have been given two new patrol boats. Uh, what they have is inadequate, but at least they have some capacity. They will be joined by the Ghana Navy. The Ghana Navy is also sensitized and is part of this whole show. So the Ghana Navy, the Marine Police, and together with the Fisheries Enforcement Unit, we have what we call VMS, where almost like a TV, we sit at Tema, we sit at Credit, and you know what's happening on the sea. The see problem see. is that you don't have the equipment to go and stop that vessel you see on your TV screens fishing. But we have a record of the fishing. So as soon as you land, whenever, whenever you land, there will be police, whatever, waiting for you to pick you up. And I see. Your license will be I, I see. It, it, uh, uh, some would say that, well, since you don't have equipment to stop these uh, trawlers, closing the season won't achieve anything. It will. Yeah, but if you see them on the screens and they have fished already, you wouldn't have achieved anything. In the first place, I think the monitoring and control and surveillance unit, we have that. The monitoring, control and surveillance unit. Very effective? Very, quite well. They've been equipped to work, to make sure they don't even go at all to start off. They don't start off at all. But if they do, maybe by night, they still are patrolling on the water. To make sure that nobody is around. Prof wanted to say something. Yeah, let me add mm. that now we have introduced a quarterly license regime. So uh, for a quarterly license regime, if during the three months you have you make any infractions, by the time you are coming to apply for a new license, we will not allow you. But they would have caused the damage already. Let me continue. Yes. In addition, uh, you to be able to export your fish or sell your fish. You need a permit from the ministry. And if you have done any infractions, you can't export your fish or you can't bring it to the market. I see. So now, it, let's talk about this. Um, hmm. Prof, you are with the department there. In terms of the complaint from uh, fisher folks, L let me put this question to Professor Nuno. I'll come back to Professor Danson. Mm -hmm. Did we do the right thing? They claim that consultation was not too good. Uh, I would not uh, agree to that. Uh, this close season concept has been on the drawing board since 1997, where the concept of community-based fisheries management committees mm -hmm. was brought uh, to bear in this country. At a workshop at Winneba, this was discussed with fishers that close season is the best way for Ghana because of the nature of the diverse nature of our fishery. So this it, workshop was when? This, it was in 1997 in Winneba. Okay. It was organized by Bezigate. The consultants led the Ministry of Fisheries at the time it was the Fisheries Commission to do this. And since that time, there's been series and series of consultations which eventually led to the formulation of what we call here the fisheries management plan mm. in 2015. Before this fisheries management plan, there was two years of consultations between 2014 and 2015, series of wide consultations for input from all stakeholders. So all stakeholders put it in this plan, in page 16, 17, 18 of this plan, mm. that there should be close season between two months to four months annually between 2015 and 2019 i see and we have not been able to implement it but we started in 2016 hmm. 2017 2018 to try and just close for the trawlers we were trying to protect the artisana the small boat so we closed for the trawlers 
But we found out that we saw only a marginal improvement. Only a marginal tip of the iceberg improvement. So we see that, no, this can help us. So then let, it, let us close it for everybody. So when was, this, when was this everybody closer communicated to these persons? This everybody, everybody closure mm. is in this plan. It's in this plan. And okay, they so the assumption was that once it is in the plan, they should know. Not really the assumption. Let but me when, when was it formally it was communicated that from August 7, we are implementing this program? It, it, uh, the minister made the declaration, the formal declaration, mm. only last week. But we have been engaging, engaging with them from 2016, 2017. In fact, this government from 2017, when it was closing the trolleys, it announced that very soon, very soon in the coming years, we are going to go to all fleets. So this announcement I'm, has I'm been coming going to on. Professor Dancy to talk about the, 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 the particular species we are targeted. But I, I wanted to clear this because the fishers' complaint is that you did not communicate well to them. So, and you have just said that it was just last week that the minister made the formal announcement. And that's unfair. That is the formal declaration. Mm. But we have been engaging with them and says what kind of engagement? Meetings at their landing beaches level. At their landing so beaches level. You can say that for and about a year you have been engaging them. Yes. And they can attest to it. And they can attest to it. And they are leaders. Why would they then turn around and complain that you have not given them enough time? You, you, you saw them say they have gone for loans and stuff like that. They are leaders are always with us at the meeting. As a ministry, we work together with reps of all their leaders. At the commission, they are members. At the ministry, every committee, we have a close season committee, which is supposed to do see to all the employees. So they know? They know. Their leaders are members of all I, I these committees. This is an issue that I'm sorry. Or it's possible that maybe they don't send the information. Maybe the leaders didn't tell them. Yes, and so we will blame you if their leaders don't tell them. But we, You met them and if they, their leaders don't tell them, we blame you. But we go to the beaches. We go to the beaches. Small, small. We know fishery, Ministry of Fisheries has presence in all the districts mm. along all the coasts. We have technical officers collecting fish data when they land. And this communication is almost daily. Daily. But, Prof. Dancy, which species are we targeting for the close season? Uh, essentially, we are targeting the what we call the pelagics. The pelagics, the small pelagics. Mm. These are those that are on the surface of the world, we'll call them pelagics. Mm. There are large pelagics, which are the tunas. Okay. And we have the small pelagics, which are the sardinellas. Sardinella. Is that the one we call Ketasku boys? Uh, Ketasku is anchovies. It's also, okay. it's also part of it. Anchovies, guitar school boys, and then the sardinellas, the mm. emani, mm. emani, uh, the people's fish, as we call it. Mm. And then the mackerels, the... Um, What's some people call, call salmon. Salmon. Right. salmon. What do you call salmon? Okay. Right. So salmon. if you like salmon, the emani, and the anchovies, mm. these are the small pelagics. We we'll allow them to, to breed. We we'll allow them to breed. They are, mm. are pig spawning season. Because they form about 80% of total marine landings of Ghana. These form 80% of the total marine landings of Ghana. So they form the bulk of the, and these are caught by the artisanal, the canoes. So they are the focal group we, we, we need to look at critically. Mm. Than even the trawlers. The, the, the trawlers. Okay, the trawlers. We have run out of time, but Professor, let me give you the opportunity to, to deal with this quickly. Now, so the artisanal farmers are own small ones. How what are how do we meet them halfway? We know I guess seven it has happened. How do we meet them halfway? We've gone around and had dialogue with them. Mm. You know, the government subsidizes uh, uh, their fuel that they go fishing, right? So, we have uh, what we call landing beach committees everywhere where there's fish landed, there's a landing beach committee. When they sell the premise fuel we supply to them for fishing, they are to retain 53 percent of the profit on that money mm. and to use for development. And they are supposed to do it with the help of the district assemblies. Okay. Over the years, for many years, they have not been plowing back that money for development. We have told them and engaged with them to activate the use of these monies to cushion as some sort of social capital in the, for course, them, of this in the course of the month. And we've engaged with them over the years to do that. They have lots of money sitting in the banks not being utilized and we cannot identify fishermen 
they are the local level more. can identify who are, are, I'm grateful. We need to talk to you more about them. this. Uh, yes. Professor Francis Nunu is the acting uh, chief director at the Ministry's Minister of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development. Uh, Professor Patrick uh, Ofori Danson is, is with the Department of Marine and Fisheries Science, University of Ghana, and also with the Science and Technical Working Group of the Fisheries Commission. Guess this setting wouldn't be the last time to talk about this. Gentlemen, I'm grateful for your time with us. Thanks so much for staying there. Uh, this is how we're wrapping up the show. My name is Bright and I'm